Could this be the world's laziest way to land high paying copywriting clients? Let's find out. Welcome back to part three of my zero to 10K a month copywriter series. If you've been following along, you should know where to learn how to write copy that clients are willing to pay big money for. You know where copywriting sits in the hierarchy of importance. You know how to craft a million dollar offer. You've chosen your niche and your service. You set up your portfolio, your website, your socials. So you look like a pro and you're finally ready to work with those sweet, sweet juicy, juicy, high paying high clients. clients, which is exactly the topic of today's video. I'm so excited. We're finally going to talk about the number one reason you're watching this and probably the reason you're interested in copywriting in the first place, landing high paying clients and getting that paper. But first, yes, I know what you're thinking. Damn, Sean, your voice sounds so damn sexy today. I know. I've spent this past week building a home recording studio. It is nearly done. Very excited to share it with you when it is done. I have finally upgraded my mic game. All right, I'll skip to the beautiful Neumann TLM 102. Fun fact is the baby brother of the famous U87, which pretty much every best-selling artist ever, Drake, Ed Sheeran, Beyonce, The Beatles, have used to record their vocals. And hey, if it's good enough for a Drake record, it's probably good enough for a YouTube video. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the topic at hand, which is how do we get you high paying clients so you can be rolling in cash? Here's the motivation for you actually about how powerful this client acquisition strategy is that I'm about to teach you. A month ago, I woke up in my beautiful beautiful oceanfront apartment and I said, hey, you know what? This is great, but I want to live in an even more beautiful, taller oceanfront apartment with more rooms and more space. I also want a dedicated home recording studio, high end professional equipment so I can level up my music and my content game. And I also said, fuck it. You know, while I'm at it, I also want to take a month off and travel through Europe, go to Italy and Ibiza and Monaco and Berlin and ultra Croatia and Tomorrowland in Belgium, visit the temples of Istanbul on the way home and hell, maybe play a couple couple DJ shows while I'm over there. So the whole trip is a tax expense. One, two, three, let's go. All of this, as you can probably guess, requires money and quite a lot of it. So I flicked the on switch on my infamous Facebook ATM client getting system. I started using this strategy for 20 minutes a day and made $81,000 in May and exactly $100,000 last month in June. Slide note, very excited. I've been so fucking close to 100K a month for like three years. I've hit like 99K months and I've never been able to crack that goddamn 100K a month mark. So we did it, baby. We're here. Money. Feels pretty fucking surreal knowing that literally five, six years ago, I was packing coffee in a warehouse for minimum wage. I was born in the second poorest country in the world. Okay, so really, I don't care who you are. If you're watching this, you can absolutely do the same. I promise. So really, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're watching this, I am living, breathing proof that if you roll up your sleeves, you're willing to put in some work and you apply the right strategies, anything is possible and anyone can make it happen. Just do it. Because despite very humble beginnings, I am now sitting in the studio in my new apartment. Europe is booked and I am leaving tomorrow for a five week tour slash holiday. Everything I wanted, I made it happen. And I made it happen with this client getting strategy that I'm about to teach you. I also invested $66,000 in a high level mastermind so I can scale my side hustle to $200,000 a month by the end of the year. That is the goal. And yes, I want to remind you that this is technically my side hustle, right? I am a full time artist. I'm a music producer. I'm a DJ. So hopefully this serves as some inspiration that yes, it is possible to make hundreds of thousands or even over a million dollars a year working just a few hours a day. Impossible. I've done it. Many of my clients and students have done it. And there is no reason that you cannot do the same. And that is what I love the most about this client getting strategy that I'm going to share with you today. It takes literally 20 minutes a day and it doesn't involve any posting, DMing strangers or pestering people in Facebook groups. In my opinion, it is the simplest, easiest and downright laziest way to land high paying copywriting clients. And it is so brain dead simple. I guarantee you will kick yourself for not thinking of it. It's the exact same strategy I used to land my first four high paying copywriting clients when I was getting started six years ago. And it is the same core strategy I still use to this day to make a million dollars a year in my business. What's funny is that Facebook actually rolled this feature out six years ago, but I see almost no one using it 
to land clients. In fact, the only other person who I can see actively doing this besides me is making $14 million a year in their business. No surprises there. I'll reveal the strategy later in this video, but first you have to understand that when it comes to landing clients for any business, there are only three ways to do it. Either they come to you, you go to them, or someone introduces you, AKA a referral. Either way, someone's gonna have to make the first move. If you don't know about them and they don't know about you, how is this client relationship ever gonna happen? So the two main approaches that you're gonna hear me talking about are hunting and farming. Just like hundreds of years ago, long before the invention of Uber Eats or any shit like that, if you are hungry, there are only two ways to get food, hunting and farming. Hunting is pretty self-explanatory. You get out there in the wilderness with your spear, kill some shit, you drag it back to the campfire, you cook it and you eat it. But what you kill is what you eat. And tomorrow you'll have to go out again and hunt for more food and do it all over again every single time you wanna eat. It's quick and instant results, but it's not exactly long-term sustainable. Which is why us humans invented farming. So rather than running out all the time for food, we could have a system that produces food so we never run out. It's definitely not instant results. You don't plant crops and expect to dig them up the next day and eat them. You need to nurture and harvest them. But if you do take the time to set this up, you'll have a never ending supply of food. And in case you haven't picked up on my analogy yet, when I say hunting, I'm talking about cold outreach. Okay, cold emailing, cold DMing, all the ways you probably tried before to get clients. And when I say farming, I'm talking about building an audience of prospects and nurturing them over time. This could be an email list, a Facebook group, an Instagram following, or even YouTube, like I am doing right now. Both hunting and farming have their advantages, and if you master both, I can guarantee you will never go hungry again. That is a promise. Now, most people think they should start with hunting, which makes sense, right? Because it's instant results. But having done this every day for the last six years and having helped more copywriters hit six figures than any other coach that I know of, my professional recommendation is that you actually start with farming. And here are three very good reasons why. The first and main reason is because of something called the larger market formula. Studies have been done on people's buying behaviors on nearly every niche imaginable, and they've all concluded basically the same thing. In any market, roughly 3% of people know exactly what they want and they're looking to buy right now. In the next rung down, about 17% of the people are in what we call information gathering mode. They're looking for a bit more information and maybe comparing alternative options before making their final decision. In the rung below that, approximately 20% of the people know they need some form of help, but it's not an urgent thing for them. We call these people later buyers. And at the bottom of the pyramid, about 60% of people in any given market aren't looking to solve their problem, most likely aren't even aware they have a problem and the majority of people in this rung will never buy anything from anyone. So to use a real world example, let's pretend we're shopping for a rug. First thing that came to my head because last week I was looking for a rug to help soundproof my studio. So it's not all echoey and shit when I'm recording these videos for you because tiles, tiles are a very are echoey, echoey surface. Echoey. Not relevant, let's focus here. So a simpler version of this. Imagine a hundred people walk into a rug shop in a day. Three of them are walking into the shop to buy a rug. I fell into that category. I was going into that store with the intention of walking out with a rug. And that's exactly what I did. It is currently sitting under my feet right now and it is very comfortable and very thick and absorbs a lot of sound. Now, roughly 47 out of 100 of those people will walk into the store to look at rugs to buy in the future. So they're looking to buy a rug, but just not today maybe in a month, maybe in six months or a year. So these people are the later buyers and 50 out of 100 people who walk into that store will never buy a rug. Not from this store, probably not from any store. These are the tire kickers. They wanna look for rugs just for the fuck of it or because they just had nothing better to do with their Sunday. Maybe their girlfriend dragged them there, but they have zero intentions of actually buying a rug. Now, if you are hunting for clients, AKA imagine you were a rug salesman and you went to a new development where everyone's just moved in and they're furnishing their houses, you go door knocking on random doors trying to sell rugs. Well, knowing these stats, only three out of a hundred people are even interested in buying a rug right now. So even the best salesman in the world could only close a maximum three out of a hundred people with this approach. The people who buy, buy, and the people who don't, don't. 
You have one conversation with them, there's no follow-up and you can never really contact them again. So you're only ever appealing to this tiny 3% sliver of people and you're missing out on the massive 47% of people who are gonna buy a rug at some point in the future, just not right now. Farming, on the other hand, nurtures these later buyers until they are ready. So by getting them on an email list and sending rug buying tips or following your rug page on Instagram and posting all the beautiful rugs you have or retargeting with ads and showing them all the testimonials of people thrilled with your rugs or whatever medium you use, you're staying in touch with them so that when they are finally ready to buy a rug, you will be the first person that they think of because you're top of mind. Good job. That is the idea behind farming. And that's the first reason that we start with farming because we're able to target 47% of people instead of just tiny 3% sliver, which gives us access to nearly 16 times more potential clients. And speaking of that 3%, the second reason we start with farming is because farming actually helps us identify the hottest leads instantly. Rather than reaching out to 100 strangers to identify the three people that might be in need of a copywriter right now, we put out a piece of content that 100 people see, and then the three people who are interested will put their hand up and say, I'm interested. So it takes all the guesswork out of it. Just like, for example, if you were single, rather than walking up to 100 random women at a bar to try and find the three who are single, interested and looking to go home with someone tonight, you set up a dating profile and you know that whoever matches with you is in that 3%, unless they're using Tinder as a funnel to grow their OnlyFans. Well played, ladies. And the third reason that we start with farming is that it is incredible market research. When we're putting out this content and we're seeing what topics and angles our audience responds to and cares about, which is exactly the ammunition that we need to hunt successfully. In order for your cold outreach to work, it needs to contain a very specific offer that your target prospect really wants. And you'll have no idea what that is until you've done your research. Doing cold outreach without knowing your market's desires and pain points is like trying to hunt blindfolded. Unless you're fucking Spider-Man and you have a sixth sense, then you don't really stand a chance at catching anything. So farming will give you the raw ammunition that you need to hunt. Perfect example, I have a friend, Caleb O'Dowd, a very funny Irish fella and a very successful copywriter. He sold well over $100 million with his copy and was actually mentored directly by arguably the best and most famous copywriter in history, Gary Helbert. And in fact, when he was 20, he actually lived with Gary for three years in his apartment in Miami. Pretty insane. So Caleb tells the story of one of the first assignments that Gary ever gave him was to sell a sex pill. What is that? Now, bear in mind that Caleb was a young Irishman with zero sales skills or copywriting skills. His only experience was carpentry. And being a young man in the peak of his sexual prime, obviously he's not really able to relate to the people in their 60s who are buying these pills. So Gary asks Caleb, he says, hey, why do you think these men are buying these pills? And Caleb says, well, I don't know. I guess what used to work downstairs no longer works anymore. And Gary says, you idiot. You just made the mother of all mistakes. You made an assumption. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Gary says, who do you think might know the most about why these people are buying these pills? And Caleb says sheepishly, I don't know, maybe their doctor? Gary looks at Caleb and sighs. <sighs> you have a long way to go. Hey dumbass, maybe the people who bought the pills might know why they bought the pills. So here are the phone numbers of the last 100 customers who bought from us. You are gonna call them up and you're gonna ask why they bought. And Caleb's like, uh, you want me, a 20 year old farm boy with a thick Irish accent to ring a bunch of old people and ask about their private parts? I don't think so. Gary says, yep, off you go. So sure enough, Caleb spends two weeks, he calls every single person on the list and to his surprise, they are very open about their motives for buying and they share everything with him. The results were very surprising. As it turned out, they weren't buying because their private parts weren't working or they couldn't get it up. The reason almost all of them bought was actually because they'd been married to the same person for decades and they felt guilty and ashamed that they weren't sexually attracted to their wives anymore. And so they wanted to help reignite that sexual desire again that they used to have for their partners. So then Gary says, okay, now armed with this information, 
go and write a sales letter selling this. Caleb goes, dude, what do you mean? I've never written a sales letter. I don't know the first thing about copywriting or marketing or sales. I'm literally a carpenter. I just moved here because it was warm and Ireland was cold and miserable. I just happened to be living in an apartment with you. But Gary remains strong. He says, Caleb, I don't care. Just go out and write the damn letter. So he does. And he comes back a couple weeks later with his first ever sales letter. Gary makes a couple changes to the PS, but other than that, just takes it and mails it out to thousands of homes. And to Caleb's astonishment, the letter ends up making over a million dollars in sales for this dick pill from the first ever piece of copy he ever wrote. And that right there is a perfect example of why before you do any kind of cold outreach like this mail piece, you need to know your target market extremely well. And farming is a great way to do this type of research. For some reason, people still insist on starting with cold outreach, even though it is the most difficult way to land clients. See, the search for clients is like searching for gold in the woods at night. You wouldn't start looking furthest away from you first, would you? No, you'd start with what's immediately in front of you. Now from left to right, the hottest of these people is going to be current and past clients, if you have any. Then one wrong along is asking for a referral from family and friends. One wrong after that, we have casual contacts, which is like all friends and acquaintances, people you're friends with on Facebook, for example. One wrong after that, we have your extended network, which is kind of like everyone following you on all platforms or just people who know you in any way whatsoever. Even if you don't know them, you might know of them, that type of person. And then all the way to the right, the furthest away from us, we have complete strangers, which is the biggest category by far. And I still have some ninja systems, some of the best in the game for landing clients with cold outreach. But in my opinion, it makes sense to start with the low hanging fruit of people already in your network. The golden rule for getting clients is very simple. Avoid going cold at all costs. If you can get an intro from someone who knows the person for the love of God, do it. Any introduction is better than going in cold. And in fact, you actually have a gold mine of clients sitting under your nose at this very moment, as I'll prove in just a minute. But firstly, moving from left to right, the hottest category we have is current and past clients. For your current clients, if you have any, if you're working with anyone, maybe you're just doing email for them right now, as an example, hit them up and say, hey, you know what? I'd love to help you get even better results than we're currently getting. Is there anything else that I can help you with to take more work off your plate? In fact, I know we're actually running Facebook ads to grow our list. I actually wrote a couple variations for you. Give these a test and let me know how they go. And if they do well, then maybe we can consider me taking over your ads in the future. No pressure. I just want to help. And then you jump on a call and you upsell them. Super simple and very obvious, but you'd be surprised. Most people never even think to do this. Likewise, for your past clients who maybe you've done one time projects before, hit them up and just say, hey, I noticed you're promoting X. Would you like some help with that? It is the easiest low hanging fruit to start with. From there, we move into close contacts, which is friends, family, and fools. Now, one way you could do this is to DM everyone you know and say something along the lines of, hey, hope you're well. This is super random, but I've been working as a copywriter for the XYZ niche for the last few months and getting some great results for my clients. I'm looking for a couple more clients to add to my roster this month. Would you happen to know any business owners who might need help with their marketing? And if you haven't worked with any paying clients yet, then instead, just mention that you've got a few great testimonials. Assuming you did the testimonial swap we talked about in the last video. And if you haven't, you go back and watch it and pay attention this time, okay? If they say yes, then say, great, feel free to tell me no, but would you mind introducing me? I'd love to write a couple samples for them and see how they perform at no cost. In fact, what I can actually do is put together an introduction for you and then you can just copy paste and send it off. Is that cool? And then you're gonna write your own introduction. One of the biggest reasons people don't introduce you to potential clients is that they don't know what to say or where to introduce you. They don't know about your skill set and your experience and your training. They're just trying to help. So make it super easy for them by writing your intro for them so they can copy paste and send it off. Something very simple like, hey, friend's name, I want you to meet my friend, your name. She asked if I knew any niche business owners who wanted help increasing their customer AOV or LTV, depending what type of copy that you do. And you came to mind. He said he'd be happy to write a couple free samples for you because you're a friend of mine. 
So I'm connecting you guys here so you can send it over. Write that out, send it to them and say, hey, can you copy paste and introduce us in a three-way chat on text, email or messenger, whatever platform is easier for you. The more specific you are about what you want in life, the more likely you are to get it. So from there, talk to the business owner, send over your site with the samples, have a chat to see if they're a good fit. And if they are, book a call and close them. Simple. More on how to do that in the upcoming modules in this series. Now, if you wanna take this a step further and really dial up the heat, we can actually move one rung over and apply the same strategy at scale to everyone in your casual context sphere. You can actually turn your entire Facebook friends list into your personal affiliate army. Check this out. On every social media platform you have, everywhere you have an audience, post something along the lines of, hey, wanna make a cheeky 500 bucks? Read below. As you may or may not know, for the last few months, I've been training as a copywriter, working with the niche, niche, and getting some great results for my clients so far. I'm looking for a couple more clients to add to my roster this month, and this is where you come in. Would you happen to know any business owners who might need some help with their copywriting slash email marketing? If you're down to introduce me, I'd love to write and send a couple free emails for them to show them what's possible with their list slash website slash funnel slash whatever. And if we end up working together after that, then I'll swing you 500 bucks just to say thanks so you can treat yourself to a nice five-star hotel for the night. If you have someone in mind, just shoot me a DM and I'll take it from there. Now, please edit this to be in your own voice and insert your own training and experience so we don't have a hundred people posting the same thing. Now, if you don't wanna offer a cash incentive, you don't have to, but you have to understand that people aren't waking up thinking about sending you referrals, not even your own mother. If you incentivize them, they are much more likely to do it. And $500 is a number that most people will actually give a shit about enough to go out of their way and refer people to you. And if you're offering something that is recurring in nature, like email marketing for $2,000 a month, for example, then you've made four times your money back in one month. Not bad. <laughs> Now, moving on to the fourth and final rung of a warm audience and the main driver behind my infamous Facebook ATM strategy. Remember at the beginning of this video, I talked about how I needed money to do all this cool shit, like move into a five-star five beachfront, beachfront hotel, hotel build, a build a studio, book a five-week five trip, week to, trip Europe. to Europe. So I flicked the on switch on my infamous Facebook ATM client getting strategy and made 100K last month. Well, the 20 minute a day strategy that makes me on average 35K a month from my personal Facebook profile without posting, without DMing strangers or pestering people in groups. How is that even possible? Well, that's exactly what I'm about to reveal and I have certainly saved the best for last. So if you've fallen asleep, then wake up and pay attention because this is some incredibly ninja stuff. Keep up, motherfucker. The only two places I have ever shared this outside of my high-end CMB program are at my friend Morgan Nelson's Dream Out Loud Mastermind, which people paid in excess of $1,000 to attend. And more recently, a three-hour workshop I hosted live on Zoom, which people paid $197 to attend. All 50 spots were sold out, so there is no way you can access it. Not even if you email me begging for access, as many people have. Nope. So I'm not gonna give you the exact system word for word with all the scripts because that's not fair on everyone who's paid for access, but I will give you the core system so you're free to experiment and work some of those things out on your own. But honestly, this system is so simple, I guarantee you'll kick yourself for not thinking of it first. At its core, the system basically breaks down into three simple steps. Number one, join seven niche Facebook groups. Number two, add prospects as friends. And number three, post on your stories. That is it. What? What the? And before you come swinging those fists at me and destroy the comment section like, but Sean, it's not that simple. All the gurus tell me I have to post in groups six times a day and call DM a hundred people with my pitch. Talk shit, get hit, bro. You're a scammer, bro. I'ma tell my homies, pull up on your crib, throw you out of the window of floor 72 and put that on your story, huh? Dislike, unsub. Well, I did say it was simple, didn't I? But seriously, that is my system. That is it. It is the world's laziest way to land clients and it totally crushes. I don't even do half of it because I have a VA that adds the friends for me. 
And I recommend that you do the same. Literally, go to Upwork, hire someone for $4 an hour from the Philippines. And if you think that's slave labor, that's actually an above average salary for most of them. You're gonna join seven targeted niche Facebook groups full of the exact type of business owners that you wanna write for. So if you chose online fitness coaches, join seven quality engaged groups full of online fitness coaches. Make sure they're high quality and active. Okay, none of these spam fest groups. From there, you're gonna add or have your VA add 40 friends a day, 20 in the morning and 20 in the evening. Okay, you wanna split it up so that you don't get flagged and thrown in Facebook jail. Add the people first who are the most active and engaged in the groups, and then you can scroll through the members list and add everyone else afterwards. But before you send any friend requests, look at their profile super quickly, five second check to make sure they actually look like a prospect. Now, will everyone accept? No, depends on how well you set up your profile. Maybe half the people will accept. So you're adding 20 new friends a day. That's 600 a month, 1800 after three months, 3600 after nine months, and just after eight months, you've hit the 5,000 limit. Do you think that if you were friends with 5,000 targeted prospects, you might be able to turn one or two of them into paying clients? Probably. And that's it, okay? At this stage, we're not gonna slide in their DMs like, how's business, bro? And try and pitch them or any of that sleazy bullshit, okay? We're simply trying to grow our friends list with targeted prospects at this stage. So for everyone who accepts your request, I do recommend starting a simple conversation with them. Just reply to their story or some post that they made. Keep it casual and shoot the shit back and forth over a couple of messages about literally anything. We are just trying to build a small connection and tilt the algorithm in our favor because it does show your content more to the people that you've actually talked to in the DMs. Which brings us to the third and final step. Number three, posting on your stories. Now, first of all, why stories? Like why not post on the feed or the groups like everyone else? Well, firstly, because most people posting are flat broke and modeling them is only going to get you the same results. And secondly, you've already tried this and it doesn't work. You spend an hour writing out a beautiful, well thought out, perfectly copyrighted post, sharing your struggles, your lessons, your hero's journey and your eventual success and the crucial lessons that you took five painstaking years just to learn that if they just implement this one email strategy, they'll make millions just like you. You hit post, you check back an hour later and you hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of exactly no fox given. And then to add insult to injury, the next day you post some stupid poll while you're on the toilet about does pineapple belong on pizza? And you get bloody hundred comments, right? Like where the fuck were you guys when I was posting actual valuable shit? Okay, the algorithm is a joke, right? I have no interest in playing that game. If I wanted to hear a joke, I'd just go and watch a Jackson O'Doherty video, okay? Because they're actually funny. If I take time out of my day to give out free advice, I'm gonna make sure that people see it. And I'm gonna make sure that a percentage of those people who see it become paying clients and pay for the time that it took me to give out that free advice. You think I make these videos for free because I'm a good person? Fuck that, all right? It is 2.30 a.m. on Saturday night. I got a goddamn seven-figure business to run, all right? I got hits to make. I got shows in Europe to play. I want to play Main Stage Ultra Tomorrowland one day. That shit's not going to happen if I'm just sitting on my ass all day helping broke motherfuckers who aren't going to do anything with this advice anyway. No. I make these videos because I know a small percentage of people who watch them are serious about their results and their future will conclude that I am the leading expert on this topic and sign up to work with me. Okay, the only reason Homozy or any of these people put out content is to grow their reach, grow their brand and make more money. Make no mistake about it. So bringing this back to you, you're out here, you're posting on Facebook, you're getting two likes, one from your granddad, one from that weird stalker chick and one comment, spam. And then Gary V comes along and he says, patience, bro. Your first a thousand posts aren't gonna get likes. You just need to keep posting, man. Once you made 10,000 posts, then come talk to me, bro. Maybe you can get some likes then. I don't know about you, Gary, but posting once a day, which is a lot, that's gonna take 10,000 days. That is 27 years. That is a full lifetime jail sentence before I am supposed to start making money. Right, I may as well just go murder someone and sit in the can for 27 years and I'd probably make more progress than posting on Facebook because at least I won't have to pay for rent or groceries. Which brings me to Facebook 
stories. So why Facebook stories? What's all this hype about? If you're like most people, you're probably thinking, hang on, Facebook's crap, but stories? Who the hell even checks Facebook stories? They get even less views than the posts. And to that I say, you are absolutely right. Until you learn how to do them properly, because there is one massive difference between Facebook stories and Instagram stories. And I'm curious if you know what I'm talking about. Pause and comment if you think you know, because out of hundreds of people that I've asked, only one person could get it right. This difference can either be a severe disadvantage, which it is for most people, hence why they get no views on their stories, or it can be a massive advantage that can literally increase your story views by a factor of 10. Can you guess what it is? Well, I'm impatient and I also can't hear you, so time's up. The core difference between Instagram and Facebook stories is that on Instagram, when someone has a new story up, all you can see is their profile picture with a big red ring around it. But on Facebook, it actually shows you a preview of what is in the story, just like a thumbnail on YouTube. Depending what you put in as that first slide, you can 2x, 5x, 10x, I've even had as high as a 22x increase in story views because of what I've put on that first slide. Seriously, I even had one Facebook story get over 2,200 views, which is literally more than the number of friends I had at the time, okay? I don't even know how that works. I want you to think for a second about how powerful this actually is. Whoa. For free, on Facebook, we're able to build an audience of targeted prospects and game the system, literally control the algorithm in our favor to put our story at the front of everyone else's and in front of thousands of target prospects for free. This is literally so OP, it should be illegal. <laughs> yeah, boy. Now, in terms of what to actually put on the first story slide to get more views, out of respect to everyone who's paid me hundreds or even thousands of dollars to learn this, I'm not gonna show you the real world examples that I showed them, but use your brain, all right? Anything that is eye-catching and attention-grabbing is gonna get more views. Shocked faces, supercars, celebrities, attractive women, Bold red text, beautiful scenery, shirtless selfies, people smiling, before and after transformation posts, news headlines, anything out of the box, unusual, or just unordinary. And yes, I can tell you from testing this for the last six years that out of all of these, attractive women get by far the most views. It is not even close. So if you're a single dude watching this, like 60% of my audience seems to be, then I do recommend investing in a girlfriend. There's a common misconception that girlfriends are very expensive, which is true, unless you shamelessly use them to 10X your story views and land more clients, in which case they can actually be an asset instead of a liability. I'm a good person, I swear. The key here though, is to grab as much attention as you can without blatantly clickbaiting people or just posting bikini models or people are obviously going to see through that and you'll cheapen your brand and your reputation pretty quickly, right? You don't want to be that try hard guy. So keep it as organic and natural as possible. Like, you know, when you're out to dinner, just snap a quick selfie and put it as the first slide in your story. I know how simple this sounds, but I literally cannot overstate the power of selfies. Okay, they are 100% free. They take 10 seconds and they are a guaranteed two and a half X story views. Now to give you a rough idea of numbers, if I don't pay any attention to the first slide, I'll usually get something like 60 to 100 views on my Facebook stories, okay, very low. But if I put a selfie first of me smiling, literally just in front of a white wall, super simple, it is a guaranteed 250 views every single time. And if I use one of the other things that I mentioned before, I regularly get 300, 500, 800, even over a thousand views on my stories. Again, that I've hand selected and added from groups. So if you take nothing away from this video, but just put a selfie at the start of all your story sequences, you will immediately see an improvement in results. So now that you have their attention, you still need to know what to do with it because eyeballs mean nothing if they don't turn into clients. So following the attention grabber slide, I call it the tide raiser because it's the rising tide that raises all ships. Ships in this case, meaning stories. Super simple, you share exactly the same stuff that you share in your Facebook posts. All right, copywriting tips, specific strategies they can implement to grow their business, testimonials, case studies, anecdotes, rants, personal stories, all that great stuff. Whether you type it out as text or you record yourself saying it, like talking head video style, 
doesn't really matter. Okay, showing your face on camera though will help you build a closer relationship with your audience than text. So talking on video is a skill I highly recommend that you develop. Trust me when I say I know nearly every copywriter on earth is super introverted and terrified of camera, including me when I was starting out. So if you do actually do this, you will immediately stand out and you'll scoop up all the good clients because frankly, copywriters are just too afraid to be on camera. And then at the very end, super important, every one to three days, you wanna add a CTA slide to the end with a call to action to DM you. Usually a word is something like, I'm looking for five niche business owners who want this specific result in the next 30 days, 90 days, whatever. If that's you, DM me the word result and I'll get you all the details. Now you wanna tell them exactly what word to DM you because again, thinking is hard and the more thinking you can remove from the situation, the more likely they are to do what you want. Also, be sure to pick a word that's short, easy to spell and ideally related to whatever your story was about, right? If you ask people to DM you the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, ain't no one gonna fucking DM you. Ain't nobody got time for that. And one final super important thing to remember that will really make or break your results is to try your best to make your stories fun and entertaining. I hate to break it to you, but no one is on social media to learn. And if you're honest with yourself, you're not really on YouTube to learn either. Okay, people are on social media, including YouTube, to be entertained. People go to Facebook and Instagram for some cheap entertainment and a quick dopamine hit. And yes, that includes all these millionaire business owners that you look up to. No matter how valuable your tips are, people aren't rolling up to Facebook with a notepad and pen ready to learn, okay? If your shit's boring, they will leave. So you need to make sure it's entertaining or enjoyable for people to consume. Make people feel something, whether it's amusement, anger, adoration, inspiration, jealousy, desire, disappointment, fear, greed, or sadness, the number one sin in marketing is being boring. Boring. So bring the audience into it. Tell stories, share your struggles, ask for their opinions, add polls, and try and make it as interactive and interesting as possible. I know this is a lot to take in, all right, but trust me, you do this for a week and it'll be second nature to you. And to see this in action, the easiest way, frankly, would just be to add me on Facebook as a friend and just watch what I'm doing on my stories. Because like I said, I make around 35K a month from this brain dead simple strategy. So that right there is the 80-20 and you could totally stop here if you wanted to, okay? Personally, I hardly ever post on Facebook, at least at the time of filming this, because this story strategy gets me more clients than I can handle. Good problem to have. But if you are struggling for clients and you have a little bit more time, maybe an hour a day, then I 100% recommend that you do also post in groups and on your own profile, but you wanna make sure you do it right so that number one, you don't get exiled and banned from all the groups for being a shark. And then number two, you wanna make sure that the effort you're spending writing these posts is actually worth it. Remember when I said earlier that you wanna join seven high quality groups? Well, there's actually a very specific reason for that number. The group posting strategy is super simple. Write seven posts and post one post in one group per day. All seven of the groups will get each post once, so your posts will last you a total of 49 days, seven times seven, before you have to write more. In terms of what to post, you're already in these groups. Okay, you've seen these types of posts before. If you open Facebook for 10 seconds and scroll, if you're friends with business owners, if you're in marketing groups, business groups, you see these posts all the time. So I don't really have to tell you what they look like, but essentially the concept is the same as stories. Okay, you wanna give some sort of specific and actionable tip or strategy that the business owner in the group will find valuable and can immediately implement to start seeing results. You can share ideas that they can use to increase their open rates, click through rates, conversions on the sales page, tips to improve their checkout page, increase their landing page, conversion rate, so they collect more emails and higher quality emails, tips to get out of the promo tab, grow their email list, improve their Facebook ad results, tips to improve their funnels and get more people to buy the order bumps and the upsells and the downsells, tips to increase AOV so people spend more when they buy, increase LTV so that people come back and they buy again and again. There is so much that you can talk about. <sighs> that was exhausting. <laughs> Just make sure that when you post, you do it with a mentality of actually adding value to the community not just posting to try and get clients, okay? Trust me, admins can sniff this shit out from a mile away. If you start adding call to actions to work with you or to DM you or any of that shit, you'll be booted out faster than you can say, 
I'm sorry. So it's best to end your post thanking the admin and giving a call to action to comment if they have any questions. From there, you can actually DM everyone who comments and take the conversation further in a natural organic way. Okay, not post business. But if they asked in the comments like, hey, I have a list of 5,000 people and my email open rates are 10%. My emails keep going to promo and spam. Like, does anyone know how I can fix this? Super easy, slide in their DMs and say something along the lines of, hey, saw your comment, super frustrating when you take the time to write all these emails and no one reads them, I totally get it. Is this like a new thing or it's been going on for a while? They say, yeah, you know, quite a while. I've tried a bunch of stuff and I haven't managed to fix it, super annoying. And you say, yeah, I totally feel your frustration. And you said your list was what, 5,000 people? Yeah, you know, that's definitely quite a bit of money you're missing out on every month. Probably in the order of 10 to 20K, depending on your price point. And if I can ask, how much are you making from your list on average every month right now? They say around 10K. You go, yeah, dude, I would say 20K is easily achievable if we're able to get your emails in the primary tab and get your open rates above 20% where they belong, then honestly, that alone should double your email sales and revenue. By the way, were you looking to get this fixed now or is it more of like a later thing? They go, nope, this is definitely a now thing. You say, gotcha. Did you want some help with this? They say, sure, you know, it depends how much, blah, blah, blah. You go, hey, I'll tell you what, if you have 30 minutes free on Thursday morning, I can walk you through some ideas on how to fix this. So you can go and either fix it yourself and depending how bad the issue is, if you wanna hire me to just do it for you, you know, then we can talk about that as well, but no pressure to make that happen. Sound fair enough? Sure, you send your calendar link over, they book, you close them on the phone and boom. $2,000 a month in your pocket. And it should be a pretty easy close because unlike cold outreach, they made the first move and actually commented on your post and admitted they had a problem and asked for your help. So you have the leverage here. And that's really it for posting in groups, right? For your profile, you do exactly the same type of posts, except given it's your own profile, you can end it with whatever call to action you want, whether that's to DM you or comment if they want further help. And in terms of exactly what to say in the DMs to book a call and then how to close them on the phone, all that good stuff, we will cover that in the upcoming videos in this series. But for now, it is time for you to start posting. So action steps from this module as my camera is about to die, very convenient timing, super simple. Number one, join seven targeted groups. Number two, start adding 40 friends a day, 20 in the morning, 20 in the evening. DM everyone who accepts and start a friendly, casual conversation. Number three, start posting on your stories with that tide raiser slide so you're getting hundreds of targeted prospects seeing your valuable tips, testimonials, and call to actions. Now, like I said, you can totally stop there, but if you do have the extra time and you wanna move faster, then you can. Number four, start posting in groups once a day. And number five, post once a day on your own profile. And that's it. That right there is the Facebook ATM strategy I used to land my first four high paying copywriting clients six years ago. It is the same exact strategy I use today to drive a ton of prospects into my pipeline. And I don't even do most of the steps, right? I only do like two out of five, right? It takes me 20 minutes a day and I make an extra 35K a month from this on average. Of course, you're not gonna make that kind of money right away, okay, because you don't have much of an audience yet, but just like a snowball rolling down a hill, as you stay consistent and you keep rolling, okay, you keep showing up every day, pretty soon you'll be an unstoppable avalanche. Camera died. So yes, as I was saying, just like a snowball rolling down a hill, as you stay consistent, you keep rolling, you keep showing up every single day, pretty soon you'll be a monstrous avalanche that cannot be stopped. Not sure if that's a good analogy, but it is 3.30 in the morning and I am leaving tomorrow for a five week tour in Europe where I will be playing eight shows and I have not started preparing or packing anything whatsoever. So I'm gonna go do that and you have a phenomenal rest of your day. Stay awesome, seriously, you're really good at that. I'm kind of jealous. And I'll see you in Monaco or wherever the fuck I get the chance to film the next one of these. Cheers.